My name is Stephanie. I'm a virtual recruiter here at the university, and I have John, Sasha, and Betty from the philosophy Ooh. department ready to answer all of your questions about philosophy at Ryerson. So without further ado, I'm going to bring in John, who's going to uh, talk to you a little bit more, and I'm going to throw a question his way. Thanks for joining us, John. My pleasure. Question that we always get is, why philosophy? Why a philosophy degree? So if you wouldn't mind telling our yeah. viewers at home. Um, that's a great question. It's a question that uh, prospective students and their parents often ask us. And uh, when they do ask us, I tell them about an editorial that appeared in the London Times a few years ago in which they described a philosophy degree as uh, offering the ultimate transferable set of skills. So in philosophy, you require a set of skills that includes critical thinking, um, effective communication, uh, fostering curiosity. And these are skills that can be applied and attitudes that can be applied in any number of different uh, settings, disciplines, institutions. And they're actually a value for, uh, for future employers. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Super, super helpful. John taught me back in the day as well. It's a fantastic mm -hmm. lecture, so thank you for joining us. I'm going to bring in Sasha now. Uh, and the question that we're going to ask hello, is, hello. what qualities um, make a good philosophy student? Uh, qualities. Uh, uh, let me think. Of, uh, so the one I can think of off, off the spot, probably uh, I, I would maybe call it a fundamental sort of open-mindedness, uh, which is to say philosophy questions... Uh, uh, some of the most fundamental presuppositions that we have with respect to all kinds of areas, like how to live a good life, how to live in a, you know, what sort of social structure is the right, uh, right kind of social structure, what is beautiful. Uh, it's sort of questions about, uh, about those very presuppositions of, of, uh, of our everyday thinking. So uh, if you want to be a good philosopher student, student you want to be, you want to open yourself up to uh, being, sort of to challenge yourself in terms of thinking about those most fun fundamental ideas. Amazing. I would say that's the, maybe the most important one. So I'm a first-year student, what's, and I'm coming into philosophy. What piece of advice would you give that student before they start their first philosophy class? Um, stop Googling things. <laughs> <laughs> stop Googling things. And uh, usually when you take a philosophy uh, class, uh, at least if you take one of mine, it's not, uh, I think it's true of, of most of, uh, uh, as far as I can tell, most of my uh, colleagues. Uh, the, the readings are not that long. So they're dense, they're not that long, so you should really try and work hard to do those readings and see how they apply it to your, to your own life. And in most cases they are, because in most cases, you know, philosophers deal with, uh, as I said, the topics of everyday life. Awesome. You know? Cool, thank you. Yeah. So let's bring Betty over, so we'll stop Googling in the meantime before, while Betty gets over here. Thanks so much for joining us today. What we want to know, Betty, is what type of experiential learning or learning in action does a philosophy student get involved with here at Ryerson? I would suggest, hopefully, uh, they get involved with talking a lot. And talking a lot gives you uh, skills of presentation, uh, the participation perhaps at a student conference, which you might find towards the end of uh, Second or third year, you're in front of people, you give an idea out, you share some thoughts, you defend it, you accept questions. And being able to do that on your feet is a very special skill. It means that you have to hear and detect multiple different answers to a question. You have to decide what answer is going to be acceptable to the person who's listening to you. And you have to be able to gauge what the sense of the audience's response will be. So if you're going to talk political correctness or how not to offend people or how to gently approach a topic, you get skills of expression and articulation and verbal linguistics and gymnastics. And that might be if you were faced with the question, does God exist? It may not be the kind of question you're immediately going to say yes or no. You might want to know why it's being asked, what's the context, who is asking the question? What would count as an answer? Who might get upset at the answer? How many different answers you might give? And all of these skills you learn as you work with concepts and ideas and theories both throughout the history of philosophy and reading contemporary works that have been uh, offered to us uh, by current people. Amazing. Well, thank you all for joining us.